Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to try to create a skeleton component from scratch and the reason for why I'm making it from scratch is there are some libraries out there but all of them are using uh, a lot of dependencies uh, that I might not be willing to pull in just to get a skeleton component so why not let's just try to create it ourselves since uh, it can be quite simple if you just want this simple version and that's the one we're going to build in this video all right so uh, you can see i have a fresh react native project here and the first thing i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to clear out um, this file this app.csx and then just create a plain one where we just have a empty component here. We're gonna export app, and then we're just gonna render out an empty view for now, or actually a safe area view. Okay, I'm gonna delete this interface just to remove all the unnecessary stuff. All right. <clears throat> okay. Cool. So in here. Not much is going on, but I am going to create a new file here, which is going to be our skeleton component. I'm going to call it skeleton, that's TSX. And in here, we're going to render out a empty view for now. I'm going to jump back to app TSX, and in here, I'm going to import our skeleton component like this. Okay. So far so good. So right now we're not really rendering anything. We're just setting up. So now I can focus on my skeleton TSX component. All right, another thing we need to do is make sure we have our simulator running. So I'm gonna open up the terminal here and then run yarn iOS. All right, so our project is now built and we have the simulator here on the right. Okay, let's now start on the implementation of the actual skeleton component. <clears throat> Those of you guys who don't know what a skeleton component is, basically, at least in my world, a skeleton component is a placeholder UI for um, yeah, other UI that will show whenever some data has finished fetching. And usually what we are using is uh, some gray boxes or some gray shapes that will mimic the structure of the, the UI you want to show whenever that data is finished or is ready to be rendered into the view. Okay. And as I said, it's usually some gray boxes. So that's the one version I'm going to create here. And as I said in the beginning, I do not want to use a uh, external library for this. So I'm going to use the animated API from React Native. So the first thing I want to create here is I'm going to create a ref. And inside this ref, I am going to define a new animated dot value. And I'm going to put it to 0 0.3. And this is basically our starting opacity. Okay. So now I can go down here and I can replace my view with an animated view. And then I can add a style property here and I can add my opacity. Yeah. All right. Okay, so here I need to make sure that I am targeting opacity.current here. And then it should be all good. Okay, so this is for the basic UI. Now we are need to create the animation that needs to run. And uh, I'm gonna define this animation inside a use effect because now we are dealing with a side effect. And I'm gonna pass in opacity here in the dependency array. And now I am gonna, inside this brackets, I'm gonna define the animation. Okay, so basically 
we are going to have a sequence. So I'm going to use animated that sequence here. And in here, I'm going to pass in two animated events. And both of these are going to be timing timed events. And for each, I'm going to pass in the opacity, the current. And then I'm going to pass in the value. Oops. The, yes, and then the configuration here. And then the value, which is going to be 1. So we're going to go from opacity 0 0.3 to 1. And then I'm just going to pass in using the driver. So that one's a true. So we get better performance. And then a duration of, let's just start with 500. OK? And since I am creating a sequence here, I actually want to do two timed events. So I'm going to do another one. This one is going to go to value 0 0.3. And this is going to have a little longer duration, let's say 800. OK, cool. So now, if I were to apply some styling here, we should be able to see something up here. OK? But instead of hard coding width and height on my view here, I'm actually going to expose those as props. OK? So up here, I'm going to have a width. That could be a string or a number, right? Or a height. I can only be a number. Okay. Now I'm going to expose these properties here. And down here, I'm going to pass them in to my view. So height is height and width is width. Yeah. Okay. So here it's actually there's a linting error. That's because this is a self closing div. So I'm just going to make sure to self close that. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So now let's actually go back to app and then let's pass in some width and height. Let's say 200, height 200. And let's see if we actually see something. So one thing I'm actually missing here is just some basic styles. <clears throat> right now I don't even have background color. So down here I'm going to create a style sheet. And in this style sheet, I'm just going to have background color equal to some gray color. And then up here in styles, I'm going to pass in an array here instead. And then on the second spot in the array, I'm going to reference styles.skeleton. OK, so it's not very clear, but there's actually a gray background here. I'm going to change the color so it's more clear. Okay, so let's try to reload the app here. Oh, actually I forgot something. So here in sequence, or on the sequence, and just remember to call start. And now we saw that sequence run. Okay, that's cool. But uh, when are you, the standard for skeleton components is they usually loop this animation. So it seems like, um, yeah, something is happening, basically. So we can wrap this sequence in a loop like this. And make sure our start here is on the very outer spot. And now our animation is actually looping, OK? So now we're getting a little bit of a. Uh, Skeleton feeling here. Uh, let's try with a different crawler, maybe, maybe just gray. Yeah, this is okay. We can see this one. Usually the gray is not that dark. I mean, it depends on your style, I guess. But uh, okay, cool. So uh, that's the very basic um, of a skeleton component, but I want to make it a little more fancy. So I'm gonna expose a variant prop here, which is going to be optional. And basically, you can put it in circle or box. And I'm also going to expose it here. And basically, this variant is um, a way for me to say, hey, is this a 
normal box like this, or is it a circle or whatnot? So what I can do is I can have a value for the radius here. If I spot that the variant that I would like is a circle, then I can do some calculation in here. And basically what I'm going to do is first I'm going to check uh, is the height that we passed, is it a string? If it is, we need to make sure we pass it to an integer. And then divide it by 2. Otherwise, I'm just going to divide it by 2, not pass it to an integer. Then down here, we can pass in for the radius. And that should actually be the implementation for the uh, circle variant. But uh, let's give it a try. So let's rent out another skeleton component here. And let's pass in variant circle. OK, now we get a circle. That seems to work. Great. Uh, let's make a default here. Let's put it to box. That's a little more clean. Okay, so uh, that's our skeleton component. Now let's try to create a skeleton or like a higher level skeleton component. Let's make a skeleton card in here. Okay, so now in here we can. Just try to group a t bunch of skeleton components to create something that might be used in a real UI. And that could, for example, be a card, right? So in here, let's say we have a skeleton component. This one is a variant circle. And uh, the height is just going to be 50. And same for the width. Now, on the same row, I want another skeleton component that's going to represent text. So for this one, I'm just going to create a style sheet. So I have that styling. So I want uh, some row here. And uh, I also want some spacing. I'm going to use this throughout. Uh, the spacing is going to be just uh, maybe margin. Eight. Let's just see how it's gonna look. So in here, I have my row. We're gonna reference the row prop. Gonna make sure that we have our second skeleton component here. This is gonna represent text. So the width is gonna be a little broader, maybe 100, or maybe 100 percent. And uh, the variant is just going to be box, so I'm not going to pass it. Okay, um, let's make sure that we're not rendering this random stuff anymore, but actually our new skeleton card, so we can adjust it as we go. All right, let's jump back to the skeleton component. So in here, I need to make sure there is some spacing. So I'm going to wrap this skeleton component uh, in a view that has this reference to the spacing style styling here, just so it looks proper. And here I'm actually going to pass in additional styling. I'm going to put in flex one. And here I'm basically saying use up. The remainder of the space because if we use with 100% here, that's going to cause a little bit of trouble in the flex layout without this property. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, down here, I'm just going to create another row, or actually, I'm just going to have a view with some spacing, and let's Put some skeleton components in here. Okay. Now, 
let's try to actually refresh the app here. Okay, cool. So this this could potentially look like a card, huh? But uh, yeah, it also of course depends on your component. But this could perhaps be a card component. So yeah. All right, I think we are done for this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about how to use the Animate API to create a very basic skeleton component, and also how you would uh, style a, a complete skeleton component using the very basic skeleton component that we created in the beginning. Okay, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.